Hey, how's it going? My name's Sean and uh, we install solar on RVs. Today we're installing solar on an Airstream and that's JD up there. Hello. He's uh, putting on the rack. That's right, we're doing a solar rack on an Airstream. We've done it a couple of times before and we're doing it again. And this time I wanna get into a little bit more detail on how, uh, how we do it. So if you're interested in how that happens, follow along. If not, you can follow along too. Nobody has to know. Oh, and here's the bear. Hello, Mr. Bear. This is our shop dog, Bear. He's uh, he's a little over two and he's got fresh off the cone, if anybody's been following along. He's on the mend, aren't you, bud? All right, let's get back up, uh, up here and see what we got going on. So right now, JD and I are trying to decide where should we set the height on this rail system here. And that's kind of one of the nice things about the Unirac rail system. We'll go over all these parts here in a bit. Uh, as, as you can see, we can adjust it. We were at the top position and now we're in the middle. Great. Uh, that's oh, the way it is around here. That's... We're getting messages and notifications. Oh, good. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So the challenge here is uh, obviously there's an awning here and it has to come out, but we don't want to hit the solar panel. Well, yeah, so the, so the airstreams, the way it's got the angle on that, on the, uh, you can see it on the arms that come up and out. So when that starts pivoting out, it goes up some before it levels out and goes down. Most RV awnings, when it's just a straight arm, it's just angling down, so it doesn't lift up at all. Airstreams are special though. Yep. So... Where does that leave us? Uh, oh, uh, the, the challenge here to further complicate things is customers had some issues with their awning, so we can't actually actuate it. Mm -hmm. So it's actually gonna have to be replaced. And again, I would say this is where the beauty of the mm -hmm. rack system comes in is uh, whoever replaces the awning, they can adjust this rack easily, especially with the awning out, or if you can get a tool in there, you probably with an extension, you could get in there and you can lift one side and adjust it, or you can take the panels off. They're just held on with four clamps on each side. Right so you can adjust it really easily. Well, I feel like uh, the last one that we did, when we were first experimenting with them, we discovered that awnings go up. We, uh, we did, it was just the the extension on here, and then we adjusted yeah. this whole side with the panel still on it, and then you lift it up and yep. screw it back in or, or tighten that bolt back up. It can be done. And yeah. So speaking of getting the solar on here and all that, uh, original plan was just to do six of these 200 watt uh, rich solar panels, but we're gonna, talking with the customer, I think we're gonna go with eight, that's four per side. And uh, yeah, so we already took off the original panels. Get a little bit of a better look on how that all connects there. And we pretty much hit every rib. And that's the beauty of system like this is you're tying into the structure where typically we're kind of just putting a lot of fasteners in and hoping it holds enough and generally it does <laughs> it does it holds it, enough that's the it holds enough yeah the solar panel companies came up with yep so. so uh maybe we'll go down and i'll get out of jd's here and i'll show you some of the specific hardware we've got let's talk about the hardware that we use here uh Doing this is gonna be myself and Bear. He's uh, enjoying the cold concrete. So what we have is a small demonstration of, yeah, how the uh, Unirac rail system works. So I got a little 50 watt rich solar panel here. And there's a little T-nut, or I think they're a slot, slot nut at the end of this, or a slot bolt, is that what we call them? And uh, just a little 13 millimeter hardware here, and that just goes right in there. And then twists, like that. And then you screw that down with an impact or something. A couple of ooga -dugas. And then you do the same thing on the end. And you use these ones when you're putting more panels going this way. In this case, we're not. And then you use these ones on the end, and they kind of work the exact same way. And believe it or not, that's how the big commercial panels, you know, those 500 watt ones, four of those just holds them down on roofs and all kinds of stuff. Uh, this is the foot that we use, or the bracket. This is a, this is called a Unirac Flashlock Duo. 
and they don't make them in this color anymore. They only make them in black, I guess. So we've been painting ours white and you can too. And uh, it seems to work pretty well. You get two holes for fasteners. Now, I don't see why you couldn't do a couple more. And then there's a little hole here where you fill that with sealant. We filled that with uh, Dicor today, but you can do other things. So you can see that entire cavity can be filled. And uh, yeah, it's got a nice little rubber grommet around there. So I really like these, especially on Airstreams or pretty much anything. Well, I think we're going to be doing this on a travel trailer or a fifth wheel here soon. So stay tuned for that. JD, do you need a hand with that? Oh, I got it. Oh, you got it? Okay. Got the other seven. All right. Oh, no, I helped with one, I thought. Oh, yeah, you did. Didn't you? Yeah. You're All right, let's. You're like, good job, JD. That's uh, the thanks. Let's take a look here. How is this coming together? So. It's coming together. This one is the moment of truth. Absolutely. Oh, will it fit over the fridge fan? I, you I see measured how, it. See how we planned for I that? I measured it, but. Boom. It's right there. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. Oh, look at that. Let's see. Oh, plenty of space. You could, you could easily fit three sheets uh, of paper in there. Let's bring our YouTube friends in there and see what they think. Is there tons of room? I hope so. Probably have about half inch. There we go. That's, That's what it looks like. You don't need much more than that, but. Top of that and... <sighs> look at this. Oh, can you hand me those two tea mounts? Sure, sure. I could do something useful. Oh, that would be uh, just dandy. Thank you. So you can kind of see how those mounts that we were talking about before, they go right in there. See, JD, precision, uh, used absolute precision and concentration to put them in there correctly. You can, I, I have been able to screw those up before. The little slot nuts or bolts, whatever. What? That's yeah. the way you put the impact on it and it's, you want to screw it down. Not I've screwed it up. That's all I'm saying. Okay. It is possible. I I've done it. Won't ask how. And then, uh, so we actually haven't wired any of them up yet. JD's going to go ahead and do that well, after. In, uh, in series pairs. Okay. Right now. And that's what's. Um, does it, does it, does it matter that they're. Oh, this one goes that way. Does it matter? That's the way you want that one? Well, that's the label. Okay. It don't matter? No. All right. Not particularly. All right. Those of you with the OCD, shield your eyes. Actually, maybe, Look away. maybe I'll flip this around that way to make it go in there. Uh, right. well, they're... Although, wait, those ones are... They're not all... into the middle. Yeah. I did that to try to keep the... To oh, the I center's can, there? But I'm still going to have to do a little extension right there. Okay. So. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll well, let the boss decide. Take them all off. Okay, fine. <laughs> no, okay. we're not going to do that. All right, but... Uh, yeah, this is coming together really, really nice. I just, I love the look of this as it goes. Let's take a step back here. Oh, yeah. This is how you get 1,600 watts on an Airstream. This is a bigger Airstream. This is a 33 foot, I believe. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Uh, we did this on a 27 or and or a 28 foot. Uh, in the front, they do end up overhanging a little bit. On this one, they don't. And that was something the customer was interested in, so we biased them all to the back. But uh, I'm just trying to think, is there a world where you can fit even more on here? I don't know. All right, JD's been hard at work uh, while I was off doing other things, but here it is, all done. Hop up here real quick. Got some end caps on our rails. I think this looks real good. I don't know. You tell me in the comments down below. What do you think? We're trying to convince more people to do this to Airstreams. We think this is a really great way to go. If you know somebody who uh, wants more solar in their Airstream, you know where to find us. We'll leave a link down below. And uh, here's how the wiring goes right there. Just right into the, using SAE to MC4 adapters. And uh, we're not getting much solar right now because we're shaded by our shop, but uh, yeah. Proof's in the pudding here. I think this is a great way to go. It is the next day. Uh, the solar is working great. It's a much, much more sunnier out today. Uh, the only problem is uh, I'm wearing my sweatshirt, so it's not really hot enough to want to run the air conditioner. 
so we don't really have a lot to put on a load on the system. It's charged the batteries up fully. Uh, they're gonna be able to boondock pretty much forever. So uh, yeah, I think that's gonna work out great for them. So uh, that'll about do it for this one. Uh, thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one. If you need any help on your Airstream, you want a system like this, check us out at sotasolar.com. Uh, just like it's spe it spelled on my sweatshirt there. We will see you then, or next time. Whatever. Bye.